Hallelujah, God is good. Hallelujah, He's our Savior. Hallelujah, He's uh, our life. And so, friends, we are welcome again to another episode. Remember, we continue with Jeremiah, the prophet that we started on. And God has been good that actually we read through these passages for our energizement and more so our edification. Because actually God desires that actually we be edified. Now let us say a word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we appreciate that it is your intention that we should live a life that is pleasing to you. And we pray that Lord you bless us during this session as we share together. And I pray for everyone and I thank you for everyone that is watching and listening and tuning in. We pray the Lord you will speak to us and abundantly bless us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we thank God that there's an opportunity we spare. And not just actually shouldn't be sparing. Because this is our life. And so when there is time to sit alone, to think through God's word, and pray, and even as you are busy at work, at your computer, at you, whatever you are doing, and your heart is maybe meditating on a song, meditating on a passage, God's name is glorified even in circumstances where people are not hearing you where people are not seeing you kneel down to pray and this is something that i learn very very greatly in my i mean the scriptures now jeremiah is a prophet like another prophet like i've said these were the men that were called by god and surely called by god and they were sure of their call because the message came direct to them and they were able to speak it to the people Remember in chapter 1, like we said, God said, I mean, he called him and said, before you were born, I knew you. And so many of us, our birth circumstances, where we have come from and how we have grown up, you look at, I mean, you streamline your life according to God's precepts. And God imparts his word in you and he shapes you. He shapes you. God shapes you. For the message that we're going to deliver. Now Jeremiah goes to share the word. And I will not forget the message that God gives him. I send you to the nations. And so every call that comes to the person that's called of God, he sends them out. He prepares them for whatever it would be. Jeremiah is prepared for the nations, beginning from his own nation in Judah. And then it spread to other nations like we saw um, the, 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 the outline that actually he also spoke a message concerning other nations. And so at every call that God will give to his person that is sending, he will prepare him with the magnitude of the, power of, the, of the work. And so how I pray that even during our time when God desires that you become a minister in his house, you become an evangelist, you become a missionary, you become a preacher, you become an apostle, you become a prophet. May he shape you fast. He shaped a, a Jeremiah for the message. Because the Bible says that he gave, I have given you my word, that he gave him his word. You saw Isaiah, that actually God touched his lips. And we shall see other prophets how God called them. And the calls are not the same. His calling is not at the same time. It's not the same way God does his things variously. But what we die for is the truth that is in the message that God has given. Because actually this is where we find challenge with the masquerading brethren. Now, Jeremiah gives us the yardstick how we should, you know, um, shape ourselves to fit into the ministry. Now, here, this moment that actually we are going to, going to talk about is Jeremiah comes with a message. And the message touches the hearers, including his family, including his neighborhood, including his entire nation and going to the other nations. But the times the message that he delivers is not palatable to most people, and so they make his life very hard. And 
the circumstances themselves make Jeremiah's heart bleed. I mean, bleed, bleeding. And so this is what we talk about as Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Because the circumstances made him cry, made him, made his heart bleed with agony, sorrow. But these did not take away the message. This did not take away the, you know, the sweetness of the message that he was to deliver to them. And so we talk about Jeremiah, the weeping man, the weeping prophet. You have heard Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. And people even ask, they can even give a question to a student in the class, those who teach CRE, that who was the weeping prophet in the Bible? Of course, many of them had their challenges and many of them wept. But the commonly known, the weeping prophet in the Bible is Jeremiah. And that one gets his tick and he gets a mark. Praise the Lord. And this is actually what we learn, one other thing that we learn from him. So we are going to read a few passages that talk about Jeremiah a weeping prophet and what made him weep the circumstances that he went through how people were behaving and his own trials that he went through for any information we shall also talk about the book called lamentations it is produced out of and of course you know the word lamentation comes from the word lament and we shall dive into that another time but now here we are going to look at a few passages that make Jeremiah be called the weeping prophet. And I'm glad that I'm talking about this. Now this is, let us begin with Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 17. You know, he was sent, God had given him a message. And he had delivered a message. After delivering, people must listen to the message. And not just listening to the message, people must act according to the message and but contrary acting contrary to the message would make the jeremiah's heart weep Thirteen seventeen. but if you will not listen this is what he says verse 17 but if you will not listen my soul will weep in secret for your pride my eyes will weep bitterly and run down with the tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. Now, many, many things are here. One, if you don't listen, my soul will weep for your pride. Because I can, one of the things that, that make people not to listen to the word, not to act according to the word, is what comes out of that. And Jeremiah mentions pride. In our society, even today, we have people that have combination of things and they can make life a little hard. Someone who is proud and arrogant, you know, it can be tough. That's a bad combination. Proud and arrogant, it is a tough, it's a bad combination. So here, Jeremiah says that my soul will weep in secret for your pride. And somewhere we have also said, that pride, the Bible says, the pride goes before a fall. Now, this is something that one of the things that makes Prophet Jeremiah weep. And my eyes will weep bitterly and run down with the tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. Now, one of the things that can make him, made him cry, made him a weeping prophet, is the captivity that these people were taken into. And yet, they had been given an opportunity to repent to turn back. Because okay, we have said that prophet Jeremiah spoke tenderly about repentance. Just like other prophets, of course. And even now, during our generation, God requires that we repent and believe. And that's what the word of God says. And so here, he weeps. He becomes a weeping prophet. This verse is, and uh, so you read on, and I'm just picking this few, so that possibly, there. I open, you open, and read a little bit more. We thank God for the technology, the gadgets that help you to find these verses, and even on our phones, even wherever you are, there is, there is listening Bible, talking Bible. You, even when you are driving, you can put and listen to the talking Bible 
those that have worked here, people have read and the word of God speaks. So this one is something very important for our take. That Jeremiah was a weeping prophet and he cried severally because of the things that were going ahead. So he says, my, weep, my soul weeps in secret. Now, how about us when we see things that are happening in our society? What are we? What are we doing? What are we saying? How are we, you know, how are we feeling about the times that are? The stubbornness that is. The recklessness that is. The deaths that are. Shall we take a leaf from Jeremiah in secret? Praying in secret. Of course, he's weeping feeling sorry for the generation so that we look up and say god come down and help us come and answer these challenges that we are facing so jeremiah leaves us a leaf leaves you a lesson to pick from to learn from now one other thing that that i want to talk about is prophet also wept in plenty due to the way he was treated the treatment the times that he went through. Now the treatment can be coming from the people that are around. And this is how what, that's what happened to Jeremiah. The treatment can also come from the circumstances in which you are. Poverty can mistreat you. Sickness can mistreat you. Deaths can mistreat you. Famine mistreats. Drought mistreats. And so the, when we talk about mistreatment, Someone's mind should not just run to the people that are around. Maybe they are abusing me. Maybe they are not respecting me. Maybe they are not caring about me. Yes, that is one way. But there are other ways. We have circumstances. So Jeremiah had circumstances that were mistreating to him. The people particularly, the people that were around him. And then the situations and environment in which he was, he found himself actually a weak being man. So in chapter 12, Chapter 12, verses 6 and 7, he mentions his family. There's a mention about his family. And um, a family is meant to be a loving. What are the characteristics of a family that actually you can enjoy? Are you a father? Are you a son? Are you a daughter? Are you a member of the family? How do you describe the people that are your brothers, are your sisters, are your parents? How do you describe your children that you're a parent and they are all there whether they are near you or they are far off how do you describe your family so jeremiah here makes a description of the family and friends i have picked something from here when jeremiah talks about his brothers his siblings whoever they are chapter 12 verses 6 and 7. now here we read together but i'm, I'm asking how you describe your family is it a loving family is it a caring family and so the challenge, I mean, the, the message comes to announce to us after reading these verses. So 6 and 7, he says that for even your brothers and house of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. They are in full cry after you. Do not believe them though they speak friendly words to you. Now here, look, listen to the family, a family like this, which is treacherous, the family which is, you know, which mistreats a family that... Jeremiah leaves me a lesson here. To reconsider our families to which we belong. Are you having anything that you can do so that actually the family does not become tricky, does not become and loving, they're not to become, and caring, they're not to become, you know, uh, protective. Because there are, people who, there are some people who just live like, like their life like that. But here, Jeremiah, this one also could have made Jeremiah to be a weeping man. That actually, his own, his own pretenders, because he says, do not believe them, though they speak friendly. Meaning that we, this is the word, the word that Jesus uses for such people who appear the other way. He calls them hypocrites. And so this is an appeal to our families, to our brothers, to the sisters, to the parents, to the children. 
May God speak tenderly to us. That actually Jeremiah speaks about it here. That even when they speak, there some people pretend to be you know, caring about you when actually they are not. So God shows us something here. And in verse 7, verse 7, I have forsaken my house. I have abandoned my heritage. I have given the beloved of my soul into the hands of, the, of her enemies. And so you read on and on and on and on. And so here, Jeremiah, a weeping man shows something here that actually, that even his family could not, could not uh, be a family that is supportive. So we pray, friends, when I speak about family here, the brethren here, let us make a prayer, not that I'm going to say prayer now, but let us pray all through for a supportive family, a caring family, a loving family, a together family. So that actually, even when you are scattered all over the country, even when you are scattered all over, a brother, son, a brother somewhere, a sister somewhere, a child somewhere, a parent somewhere, that actually, we thank God still for the technology that you hold yourselves together. I pray that you hold yourselves together. That actually, there will not be a weeping person in your family because of the treatment, because of the things that you do and say that causes weeping, that causes sorrow, that causes agony. We have seen families that have agonized. We have seen families that have cried. Brother against the brother, sister against sister, child against parent, parent against children. Those things make people cry. And so how I pray in this session that God touches our hearts. Jeremiah shows us here for even your brothers. So whether it him or not him, it's a message that is for us. Now, one other thing that makes Jeremiah a weeping man, listen to what he does in Second Chronicles chapter 35. Second Chronicles chapter 35, verse 25. There's something that actually makes Jeremiah weep here. Now, Jeremiah, verse 25, chapter 35, verse 25, Second Chronicles, Jeremiah also uttered a lament for Josiah. Josiah was the king, and by the way, he has been this Jos Josiah king has been rated to be one of those that was the most righteous man. He did many reforms in the nation of Israel. But listen to what Jeremiah says: that he uttered a lament for Josiah, and all the singing laments. The singing men and all the singing men and singing women have spoken of Josiah in their laments to this day. They made this a rule in Israel. Behold, they are written in the lament. Now, you, the lament, he's talking about the, the book of lamentation. Now, why does he cry? Why does he weep for Josiah? Josiah faced an unfortunate death. A stunning death, painful death. The man that many, many people loved. So Jeremiah, because this king died a painful death, it brought a lament to his heart. And you know somebody whom you love, someone whom you take, you know, you, you, you treasure. When something happens, it brings weeping into your heart. So Jeremiah mentions this. And it is actually that serious that he weeps, his, he, he weeps for this king because of the thing that, that, that the king had gone through. And so, friends, this is critical that we pray against circumstances that bring weeping. We pray against circumstances that bring agony. We pray against circumstances that make God's people fall. We pray against circumstances that make God's people stubborn and may be leading to painful, unwarranted death. So Josiah shows us, I mean, shows us a lesson here. But Jeremiah gives us a message. The weeping message, yes, and all of us weep many times. You must have wept many times 
I have wept many times, but there are circumstances. The things, it may be people that have been close to us that we look up to, maybe derailing themselves or dying themselves or falling sick or whatever, the, it causes weeping, but also the circumstances in which we are can squeeze you, like we have already said, and you feel not comfortable at all. My brethren, in our items of prayer all the time, we pray against situations like this, circumstances like this. Now here, I also come with chapter 4, Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 19. Just want to read something there about weeping. Now Jeremiah makes this a cry also, that my anguish, my anguish, I reel in pain on my, the walls of my heart. My heart is beating wildly. My heart is beating wildly. I cannot keep silent. For I hear the sound, for I hear the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war. Crash follows on hard on crash. The whole land is laid waste. Suddenly my tents are laid waste. My curtains in a moment. Now here he was looking, he was looking at what was forthcoming. Because things are not going to be fine, crash follows crash. You've seen times when sickness follows sickness, death follows death, you know, agony follows agony, and these things happen many, many times, and they make us cry. Jeremiah faced this, and it was troublesome something that enabled, that made Jeremiah a weeping prophet, and more so, this crash that was coming because people had forsaken God and every sin has its repercussions. Like I already said, people building, building, building altars to foreign, foreign gods made Jeremiah to weep. Pride and ingratitude made Jeremiah to weep. Idolatry and uh, adultery, all those made Jeremiah to weep. And there are moments when we hear that actually people were even sacrificing their own children on the altars. So Jeremiah is saying that what? Yes, but that was happening. As um, um, we read Jeremiah chapter 19, you will see 19 verses 4 to 6. You discover actually some people could even sacrifice their own children. It was the kind of religion there. And so friends, Jeremiah weeping prophet, there are many, many things. And one other thing that actually makes Jeremiah weeping, you know, the, the mistreatment, the oppression to the foreigners, the oppression to the orphans, the oppression to the widows. When you read chapter 7, verses 5 to 6, Jeremiah makes a lament there. The mistreatment that happens in society, people mistreating others. The orphans, the aliens, the foreigners. Now this makes the heart, the heart bleed. Now let us just read very, very quickly, 5. For if true you truly amend your ways and your deeds, and if you truly execute justice one with another, if you do not oppress the poor, the sojourner, the fatherless, or the widows, or shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not go after other gods in your own harm. Now, this was the message that was preached at the gate, temple gate in chapter 7. One of the most, one of the prominent one, one of the prominent passages here. Now, a cry, it is even a cry of today. Oppression of those that are not able. We pray to God who is in heaven, the father of the fatherless, the father of the widows, the father of the orphans, the father of the helpless, to come to the rescue of those that are being oppressed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because here, this was a message that was coming very, very loud and clear in the book of Jeremiah. And so it's a cry of today, orphans, widows, listen to the news, look at the stories that are cast, broadcast, you'll see tears, old women, old men, no, people crying, this was a cry, weeping indeed. And so we pray that God will come to the rescue of those that are helpless, and helpless people 
in our society are too many. There are pieces of land being grabbed. Someone is having his little house staying in. Someone comes because they have the money. And these are the acts that make the hearts bleed, makes the heart weep. Because you'll hear only women, you'll hear the vulnerable people crying in our society. Why must people cry like this? Why must people keep people cry like this? And so Jeremiah leaves us a message here. And who are doing it? Who are doing this? It's the people who are called by the Christian names. Believers. Bringing graders to, to, to take land, to break down houses and things like that. People crying. Now, may there be channels of sorting out these matters. And so God, who is our Father in heaven, who hears prayer and who heard Jeremiah, enable us to pick some lesson one or two and so that we can be a people that are pleasing to him. I thank God that we speak these things, we read these things, and we have to align ourselves to what the message is saying. So my dear brethren, I may not go on and on and on because we are time bound. But the message is, Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. The things that made Jeremiah to become so were circumstances that were surrounding his life. The people that were around his life. You know, sometimes one moment thrown in a, into a ditch, into a hole, in a well, you know, one time beaten, imprisoned. Now, those circumstances like that, but also saying, we pray to God to answer our prayer. Because Jeremiah stood the test of time. Will you stand the test of time, even in your weeping, even in the agonies, that God will waver, will take away the weeping and give you the joy of your heart. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. May the joy of the Lord be your strength in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>